ready to dive deep into something really cool. We're talking the Bulgarian language. And don't worry, we're not just sticking to the surface. We're going way beyond hello to uncover what makes this language tick. And knowing how much you love languages, this is going to be right up your alley. Oh, it's going to be an adventure, that's for sure. Bulgarian has this really unique spot in the Slavic language family. So many interesting things to uncover. Okay, so before we get ahead of ourselves, let's lay the groundwork. <laughs> we know Bulgarian is Indo-European, right? Specifically, it's part of that Eastern South Slavic branch. Right. It's mainly spoken in Bulgaria, which makes sense. It's their official language. But you'll also catch it around the EU, too. And here's the thing that always blows my mind. Bulgarian was the very first Slavic language to ever be written down. Whoa, seriously? Like, before any others? Before Russian, before Polish, before all of them. Can you imagine the impact? It wasn't just a big deal for Bulgarian itself. It had this ripple effect on the whole Slavic world. So are you saying Bulgarian kind of set the stage? That other Slavic languages looked to it when they started writing things down? Absolutely. Think about it. Bulgarian, with its written word, suddenly became super influential. Other Slavic languages were like, hey, I've got it figured out. Let's borrow some ideas. That's wild. It's like Bulgarian laid the foundation for written communication across a whole linguistic family. Mm. Okay, so deep history, check. But what about its modern-day relatives? Our source talks about a strong connection with Macedonian, but also says there's this whole debate about whether it's its own language or just a dialect. Yeah, the age-old language versus dialect dilemma. Linguists have been going back and forth on this one forever. You see, languages don't always fit neatly into boxes. They often exist on a spectrum, and dialects are those blurry lines in between. Then throw in things like politics and history, and those lines get even blurrier. Oh, so it's not just about the words themselves. Exactly. With Bulgarian and Macedonian, there's no denying the similarities. But whether you call them dialects of the same language or separate languages altogether, well, that gets complicated. A lot of it comes down to national identity and political history, you know? Wow, so it's like language becomes this powerful symbol wrapped up in all these bigger issues. Exactly. It shows you how language, history, and culture are all intertwined. You can't separate one from the others. Speaking of history, let's take a trip through time, shall we? Our source takes us on this whirlwind tour of Bulgarian's past, from its ancient beginnings all the way to today. And it's a wild ride, let me tell you. For example, did you know that while most other Slavic languages were becoming less grammatically complex, Bulgarian was like, nope, I'm going the other way. Really? So they were all about embracing the complexity. Totally. They develop all these intricate grammatical structures, which is actually quite different from how a lot of other Slavic languages evolved. That's fascinating. Why would Bulgarian go against the grain like that? That's the million dollar question. Linguists are still trying to figure it out completely, but one theory is that it's all about location, location, location. It's location. Think about it. Bulgaria sits right at the crossroads of Europe and Asia. So over the centuries, they were getting influences from everywhere. Slavic, Greek, Latin, even Turkish. Imagine that melting pot of linguistic ingredients all simmering together. That probably played a big role in shaping Bulgarians' unique personality. It's like they took bits and pieces from all these different linguistic traditions and created their own path. That makes you wonder, though, how much did all this mixing and mingling affect how Bulgarian actually sounds today? It's like a symphony of sounds honed over centuries of linguistic exchange. But before we dive into the nitty-gritty of pronunciation, let's talk about the foundation, the Bulgarian alphabet itself. Let's do it. I'm ready to unlock the secrets of these letters. <laughs> We're working with 30 in total, all Cyrillic. Yeah, right. you got it. But, and this is where things get really interesting, Bulgarian's history with alphabets is a bit more complicated. Before Cyrillic came along, there was this other alphabet called Glagolitic. Glagolitic. Never heard of it. Picture this these rounded, almost whimsical letter forms, like something straight out of a medieval manuscript. It's not used for everyday writing anymore, but it has this special place in Bulgarian's past. Ragolitic. Okay, I'm adding that to my list of things to look up. But wait, didn't Bulgarian get a bit of an alphabet makeover back in 1945? Something about a reform? Ah, you did your homework. Yeah, there was a big orthographic reform back then, a major streamlining of the alphabet. Because you see, language can't just stay frozen in time, right? It's got to evolve. But here's the thing about reforms. Even with the best intentions, sometimes you get these unintended consequences. Unintended consequences. Okay, now you got to be really curious. What kind of linguistic curveballs came out of these alphabet changes? Well, for starters, think about it. Some words ended up with completely new spellings. But here's the real kicker. 
Some words even change their meanings. Whoa, seriously, just from changing the alphabet. It just goes to show you how deeply connected a language is to its writing system. It's not just about the sounds. Even a small tweak can have these huge ripple effects on meaning. It's a good reminder that language is alive. It's always evolving. But we've got to talk about dialects. Our source mentioned this almost like a battle between Western and Eastern Bulgarian over how to pronounce the Yat vowel. It's not quite a battle royale, but it does show you how much diversity there is within Bulgarian. You see, Yat, it's a vowel sound that's actually disappeared in a lot of Slavic languages. But it's alive and well in Bulgarian, just with different pronunciations depending on where you are. So like in some parts of Bulgaria, the word for milk, leako, right? But in other areas, it's more like muf. So same word on paper, different sounds when you hear it. I can see how those regional variations would add another layer. Exactly. And here's the thing. The standard language, it tries to bridge this pronunciation gap, which can sometimes lead to some pretty funny situations. Oh, yeah. Well, you get speakers who are trying to be super correct, so they end up using these pronunciations that nobody really uses in casual conversation. I can just imagine someone trying way too hard to sound official. Mm. Okay, I'm ready for the grammar gauntlet. Bulgarian has this reputation, right? For being a bit of a brain teaser. Bulgarian grammar definitely keeps you on your toes. Let's put it that way. But it's also incredibly precise and nuanced. Let's take articles as an example. You know, those little words like the and a. Yeah, yeah. So in English, they go before the noun, right? The book. But in Bulgarian, they stick them right onto the end of the word. Wait, really? So it's like book the? Exactly. Book wow. the. It takes a little getting used to. I can see why people say Bulgarian grammar keeps you on your toes. <laughs> Okay, what else? What other tricks does Bulgarian grammar have up its sleeve? Let's talk about verbs. You know verbs, the action words, the heart of any sentence. Well, in Bulgarian, they don't just tell you what's happening. They want to give you the full picture. Did something happen completely? Is it still going on? I'm intrigued. It's called aspect, and it's all about adding this extra layer of precision to how you talk about actions. Give me an example. How does that work in real life? Okay, so let's say you're talking about reading a book. In Bulgarian, you wouldn't just say, I read. You'd actually use different verb forms to specify if you finish the whole book or if you're still in the middle of it. So it's like the language itself is helping you tell the story, making sure uh -huh. every detail is crystal clear. It's kind of elegant when you think about it. Exactly. And it doesn't stop at verbs. Bulgarian grammar is full of these fascinating little quirks. Like, for instance, have you ever heard of the inferential mood? Inferential mood. Okay, that one might be new for me. What is that? So it's this grammatical mood that you use when you're talking about something that you didn't actually see with your own eyes. Like imagine you hear a rumor or maybe you see some clues that make you think something happened, but you weren't actually there. In Bulgarian, you'd use the inferential mood to express that uncertainty. So it's like a built-in rumor detector in the language itself. You could say that. It's like saying it seems like or apparently. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. It makes you wonder, though, did this develop in Bulgarian on its own or did it come from somewhere else? You've hit on a key point. Remember how we were talking about Bulgaria being this crossroads of cultures? Well, some linguists think the inferential mood could actually be a subtle trace of Turkish influence. Because of the history between the two regions. Exactly. And that's the amazing thing about languages. They borrow and adapt constantly. Sometimes those influences are super obvious, like when you borrow a word directly. But other times they're hidden in the grammar and syntax. It's like a linguistic detective story. Okay. You mentioned earlier that Bulgarian has some other quirks. Spill the beans. Uh -huh. What else is hiding in this linguistic treasure chest? All right. All right. Let's talk about the double negative. Oh, the dreaded double negative. Isn't that a big no-no in English? Big no-no in English. Totally normal in Bulgarian. In fact, they often use it to emphasize something. Wait, so saying something like, I don't know nothing, would actually be grammatically correct in Bulgarian. Like you got it. It's not about being wrong or right. It's just a way of adding intensity or emphasis to what you're saying. Like, I really, truly don't know a single thing. I kind of love that. It's like the language gives you this freedom to play with negation. Okay, I need to know, what other linguistic gems are hiding in the Bulgarian language? Ever heard of pronouns of quality? Pronouns of what now? That sounds interesting. I know, right? It sounds a bit abstract, but bear with me. In Bulgarian, you can actually use pronouns to describe people in this kind of indirect, suggestive way. Okay, I'm hooked, but I need an example. How would you use these pronouns of quality in a sentence? 
Okay, so let's say you meet someone and they're, you know, kind of bland, not very memorable. Instead of saying, he was a bit dull, you could use a phrase like, Nyakakuf Chovek, which literally means some sort of person, but it's got this subtle implication that they weren't very interesting. Ah, it's like a sneaky way of throwing in your assessment without being too direct. I yeah. love it. Okay, there was one more thing, right? The word Takova. Takova. Yes. It's like the ultimate placeholder word in Bulgarian. You know how in English we use, um, or like, when we're trying to think of what to say. Yeah, all the time. Takova is like that, but a million times more versatile. Like, imagine you're telling a story and you get to a part you can't quite remember. You could be like, and then she's like, Takova, Takova. It's like the Bulgarian equivalent of waving your hands and saying, you know what I mean. Precisely. I'm starting to see why you love this language so much. It's got so much personality. It's true. But we can't forget about loan words, those words that Bulgarian has borrowed from its neighbors over the centuries. Right. The linguistic melting pot. Didn't our source mention Latin, Greek, Turkish, Russian, even French and English? Bulgarian has picked up quite a vocabulary over the years, that's for sure. It really speaks to its history as this crossroads of cultures. So where do we even start with all these borrowed words? Any standout examples? Let's start with the classics Latin and Greek. I mean, these languages have influenced pretty much every language in some way. And Bulgarian's no exception. Think about it. A lot of our words for government, law, philosophy, even everyday objects, they all come from Latin or Greek originally. It's amazing how those ancient languages are still shaping how we speak today. But how did these words even get into Bulgarian in the first place? Was it through conquest or maybe just people mingling and sharing ideas? It's a little bit of everything. Languages are constantly mingling and influencing each other. Conquest definitely plays a role. The language of the conquerors often sticks around. Then you've got trade, new words popping up to describe exotic goods and stuff. And of course, cultural exchange. Cultures mingling, sharing meals, picking up each other's slang. I love that. Okay, so Latin and Greek, check. What about some of those other influences? Well, we can't talk about Bulgarian without mentioning Ottoman Turkish. After centuries of Ottoman rule, it's no surprise that Turkish left its mark on the Bulgarian vocabulary, especially when it comes to food, clothing, that sort of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Close contact for a long time, you're bound to share some linguistic tidbits. Any examples come to mind? Oh, tons. Kebabci, which is a type of grilled meat. Baklava, that delicious pastry, chushko, a type of pepper. They all have Turkish roots. And it goes beyond just individual words, too. Even some of the grammatical structures and expressions in Bulgarian have this Turkish flavor to them. So it's like these Turkish words have become so integrated into Bulgarians yeah. that people don't even think of them as foreign anymore. They're just Bulgarian. Exactly. What about more recent additions to Bulgarian's vocabulary? I know our source mentioned French and English loan words, too. Oh, yes. French, the language of diplomacy and all things chic. Back in the 19th century, French was super influential. So naturally, a lot of French words made their way into Bulgarians, especially in areas like art, literature, fashion, you know, all the fancy stuff. French always adding a touch of class. And then there's English, the language of the Internet age. The lingua franca of the 21st century. Exactly. Globalization and the internet have created this situation where English words are popping up in languages all over the world. Bulgarian's no exception. Technology, music, business, you name it. English is there. It really makes you realize how interconnected we all are. But I'm curious, with all these borrowed words floating around, how do Bulgarians feel about it? That's the million dollar question. It's actually a topic of debate in Bulgaria. Some people, especially those who are really passionate about preserving the Bulgarian language, worry that all these foreign words are diluting it, you know, watering it down. They think it's important to use more traditional Bulgarian words to protect the language's identity. Which makes sense, right? Language is so central to our identity. But I imagine some people see it as a positive thing, right? Like a, a sign that Bulgarian culture is open to the world and evolving with the times. Absolutely. They argue that borrowing words is just a natural part of how languages evolve. It's right. not about replacing Bulgarian. It's about adding to it, making it richer. It's fascinating how language can spark these important conversations about identity and what it means to belong. It shows you that language isn't just about communication. It's about who we are. You said it. And the story of language is still being written. It's always evolving, always changing, reflecting who we are and how we interact with the world around us. It's really amazing when you think about it, how Bulgarian has held onto its unique character after all this time. Even with all these outside influences, it's like a beautiful tapestry, you know, with all these different threads woven together. 
I love that analogy. It speaks to the adaptability of language, its resilience. But like we've been saying, language never sits still, right? It's always evolving, always mirroring what's happening in the world. Which brings us to the big question, doesn't it? What's next for Bulgarian? We've gone through its history, seen how it's borrowed and adapted, but things are changing so fast now, especially with technology. I wonder how it'll all play out. That's what has linguists all over buzzing. This digital age, it's unlike anything we've seen before. The way we text, those emojis we use, even social media, it's all changing how we use language every single day. Like, language itself is becoming more, I don't know, flexible, more adaptable. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean for a language like Bulgarian with its rich history and complex grammar? Will those complexities stand the test of time, or are we going to see things become more, well, simple? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? And Honestly, there's no easy answer. Some linguists think that as communication becomes more and more global, languages might start to converge. Converge, like become more similar. Exactly. They might start shedding some of their unique features to make communication easier across different languages. So it's like a linguistic survival of the fittest. The easiest to understand forms of language win out. In a way, yeah. But it's not just about simplicity either. It's about finding that balance keeping what's unique about a language while also adapting to how we communicate today. And, you know, Bulgarian, with its history of embracing all these influences, it might be better equipped than most to navigate those waters. It makes you realize we're living through a really unique time in linguistic history, aren't we? And it's not just something happening to us. We're actually shaping how language evolves with every text, every email, every conversation. Exactly. And that's what makes studying language so exciting. It's like holding up a mirror to society. It shows us who we are, how we communicate, how our world is constantly changing. This deep dive has been incredible. Bulgarian is such a fascinating language. From its ancient roots to its quirky grammar and all those borrowed words, it really shows you the power of language and how resilient it can be. Couldn't have said it better myself. It's a language that invites you to explore, you know, to dig deeper, find those hidden gems. And when you do that, you start to understand how language shapes our whole worldview. Absolutely. It's been a real pleasure diving into this with you. And for everyone listening, until next time, happy exploring.